I am Alex Polizzi. I cut my teeth in my family's international hotel empire and now run a multi-million pound food business with my husband. Last year, I fought to save six failing family firms. This family business has actually ruined our family. Now I'm back for a fresh fight. Attitude, woman. Listen, I'm on your side. To pull six more families back from the brink. No, there's no communication. You're going to quit. Oh, yeah. In the midst of economic crisis, thousands of firms are going bust every month. Just in the last three months, you've lost about £3,000. I'm really struggling. Everything is at stake. Where is the money coming from? It's more than finance. It's family. Answer me a question. Oh, you're not going to see problem. any. Everybody keeps pointing out. You're the lazy one. You do nothing. I'm now dreading it, properly dreading it. This week, a funeral director's that is heading six feet under. Excuse me, but this looks like somewhere to come for a cheap funeral. I don't think we look cheap. A dad who thinks he knows best. She wasn't here to tell us not to, so we've done it. Customer service that brings tears to your eyes. <laughs> There's just a few more forms that we need filling out. Mm. And lackluster leadership. Why is that acceptable here? I find you inadequate as a boss. I'm on my way to Leafy Fleet in Hampshire to attempt to fix a family business that I'm hoping I won't actually be using myself for quite a while. I'm about to enter the world of funeral directing, one of the few industries in the UK that continues to grow and expand in spite of the recession. I've had to do quite a lot of research, and what it's shown me is this is an industry that bucks all the current economic trends. Revenues have grown 3% every year for the last five years. With a value of nearly £1.5 billion, the UK funeral industry employs nearly 25,000 people. However, the final nail is almost in the coffin for Holmes & Sons. We can go days sometimes without the phone ringing. Uh, a few weeks ago, I think I checked the phone just to make sure it was still working. David Holmes has owned and run Holmes & Sons Funeral Directors for five years, but in that time, he has barely made a profit. Truth be told, I'm probably a better funeral director and a better human being than I'm a businessman. David has been in the industry since he was a teenager, but as large conglomerates buy up the small independent firms, he is struggling to know what to do to survive. The bigger have got bigger and the smaller are seemingly get, getting weaker, and uh, I'm not sure we know how to fix that. I would be absolutely devastated if this business were to fail. He employs two of his children full-time in the business. 22-year-old Ollie and 20-year-old Toby. Who probably more than anyone else in this business cleans the toilet or the windows or that kind of stuff? No, it's me. But they're young and undecided and can't yet commit to the family firm. His opinion is if you're looking down at your phone, you can't be paying attention but sometimes Facebook can be more important. No, I'm my age would think I want to be a funeral director. There's got to be something else. A job, really. It's a job. Instead of where m and I was stacking shells, Fort Park, it was roller coasters. Here it's just their body. Yeah, it's quite a scary life. thing to say, saying... Yeah. When you're 22, just saying... This for the rest of your life, you're going to be a funeral actor. I think that would kind of depress me. David's dream is to pass on his family business. It's part of what you work for when you've got a small business, that maybe there's a chance of your kids taking over and maybe having a good life from it. But if things continue like this, there won't be anything left to inherit anyway. David has run up an overdraft of tens of thousands of pounds. Everything is on the line here. My house, my reputation, everything that I own, 
unless things improve, I can't see the business being here in three months' time. At the moment, there just wouldn't be any point in carrying on. I've got only 10 weeks to make a difference and save the business. We're just round the corner from David Holmes and Sons now, and I can tell you that just from a quick observation, this appears to be a very affluent area. It's leafy, the houses are big, and they're well spaced apart. Fleet in Hampshire is one of the most affluent towns in the UK, with earnings 40% above the average. 30 miles from London, the area is crammed with luxury homes and populated by professionals and executives. A business in a wealthy area and a growing sector. Where did it all go wrong? Not quite what I was expecting. <laughs> Apart from the coffins, it could be, it could look like an insurance broker's or something. I'm not sure I'm mad about this. He loved to laugh, so we put the comedy club. And it, it, it just doesn't mean anything to me. This is the last thing you should use to promote such a sensitive service, especially to potential upmarket clients. Time to meet the man responsible Hello. for this Hello. mess. Nice to meet you. David. David. I'm Alex. Yes. How long have you had this business here? Um, about five years. And how long have you been in the industry? I started as a teenager. So you've yes, been in the very business long time. a long time. Mm. OK. And why am I here? Because we're failing to engage with the local community. I just don't know why. We did for a while keep trying to put quirky things in the window. Is quirky what you look for when you're looking for a funeral director? Possibly, possibly not. And I'm absolutely fascinated as to what these slightly dusty things oh are dear, down here. Oh, dear, you found some dust. These are scattering devices. Right. So for about, I think, 10 or 15 quid... <laughs> yeah. You can have one of these, put the ashes in, and then put them back together, and then go off and kind of more discreetly scatter the ashes oh, uh, wherever you like. <laughs> Very discreet. <laughs> I don't think we've sold one. Yeah, OK. As if dusty products weren't bad enough, grieving customers are confronted with a rather chilling wall of coffins. The room for families to view their loved ones is cold and uninviting. It's no wonder only one in ten of David's clients choose to use it. Along the corridor is the dirty staff kitchen. I would be slightly disconcerted coming to see a body here and being able to see into your kitchen area. It's all disappointingly low rent. Not the kind of place I would want my loved one to be laid out. At least David's sons, Ollie and Toby, are making sure the hearse looks nice. Alex, hi, darling. Do you think you're skilled at something in particular in this business? No way would we be in the funeral business if it wasn't for our dad. Not a chance to. Some of the days when there's nothing to do, we leave feeling tired and sorry for ourselves. Sometimes we say the most exciting thing we've got to look forward to is lunch, and that's never a good day. <laughs> that's no. a slow day when it's lunch. Both boys are thinking of walking away from the business. David would lose the only thing that is attractive to customers, the fact that this is a family business. I've got my work cut out to unite father and sons. I've got one more person to meet. Sheena is the funeral home's manager, and she's been working here since they opened. She's not a family member, but is a powerful voice within the business. Bye. Alex, this is Sheena. Hello, so Hello. nice to meet you. Hi. You must have an opinion as to why things aren't going as the way they should here. I do have an opinion. We can't afford to do every advert that's available to us. Um, no. Well, I mean, no one can. No. Who can? So you don't think you're doing anything wrong in this business? You think no. it's all financial? I don't think we do anything wrong. I don't, not wrong. What I mean is, are there things you could do better, maybe? No. Stubbornly misplaced confidence is not going to help me fix this business. And I'm sure the longer I spend here, the more I'll find out is going wrong. But to the customer, first impressions mean everything. 
I don't think that the first impression that you give is to your credit. It's a bit like an office suite. It's not very warm and, I mean, it could be an insurance broker's right. office, couldn't it? It's all right changing everything in here, saying what we need to change, but it's getting them in first. That's the Listen, thing. sweetheart, I agree with that. That's but there's what... no point getting them in and then putting them off. No. That's so true. you have to work both angles of it. Yeah. When you finally drag someone in through that bloody door, you have to make sure that the impression that they get... I mean, this can. looks like... Excuse me, but mm. this looks like somewhere to come for a cheap funeral. Mm. To me. I don't think we look cheap. It's like you look cheap and tacky, but we don't. Bit of an insult? Yeah. She's not a funeral director, and she's not used to showing people in and out of a chapel of rest like you are, I am. She will have very decided opinions on what should be done here. But just a cursory look around this space shows to you why this is somewhere that people don't flock to. The shop needs a complete overhaul to make it fit for purpose. And we need to find a way to increase awareness of this independent business. But the big question is whether this funeral director's has a future as a family firm. Time to start tackling the sons in Homes and Sons. Given a free choice, I would not employ members of my family. At the moment, Ollie and Toby appear half-hearted about the job, which could be severely damaging the business's reputation locally and driving customers away. But if the boys can really cut the mustard as funeral arrangers, they could be a huge asset to their dad. It does say, David Holmes and Sons. And I know that both of you are quite young. This isn't the profession that you've chosen. And I want to see how you're managing with it as you find yourselves now. I'm sending in undercover industry experts posing as bereaved clients to test the boys in this vital and difficult role. And secretly scrutinising them with me in the flat upstairs is Charles Cowling, author of The Good Funeral Guide. This is the all-important part, I assume, of a funeral, the arranging part and the talking to the bereaved. It's absolutely crucial. It mustn't be. Um seemingly business-like um, conversation, although in the course of it, of course, business is enacted. During an arrangement, you're dealing with bereaved and traumatised people. Good afternoon. Hello there, I'm Toby. Hello there. Hello. Hiya. I'm Oliver Holmes. So it's essential to show real compassion and warmth, while at the same time making a sale worth an average £3,000. So, uh... My aunt Barbara okay. died last night. We just want to make this really different and special for my dad. It's a good start. The boys are polite. It's the room that's causing a major issue. We've got a desk between the funeral director and the mourner. It's just dreadful. We're not having two human beings having a conversation. Look at this body language. To a normal stand coffin is probably about double the price, so it's around £600. It's all form filling, no emotional connection. He's very focused on the costs of everything mm. rather than mm. trying to create an, an imaginary perfect scenario. Mm. Certainly, you would expect that this information would have to be written down at some point, but mm. that it would come at the end. Many of the best funeral arrangers will yep. sit down with the family and they'll, the first thing they'll say is, look, we're going to have a chat, mm. but we're not going to make any decisions at all in this first meeting. Now, of course, we make lots of decisions in that first meeting. We do lots of business in that first meeting. But the first thing you do is just take the pressure off people and make, also make them understand they can go on changing their mind. To be, to be confirmed. <clears throat> the... Yeah. Toby is about to face one of the real tests of this job. A client who breaks down. Now it's up to Toby to reach out to his client to put business aside and show some empathy. Yeah, there's just a few more forms that we need filling out. Oh, no, darling. Oh. Oh, God, I can't even watch. It's so ghastly. And would um, anyone in the family or yourself like to view uh, Belinda's...? Belinda? Belinda, sorry. I do apologise. Barbara. Barbara, yeah. yeah. 
doesn't have he doesn't have the emotional oh, confidence God, to I know, I know it's sick, it was I know I know I agree with you. You obviously you need emotional intelligence, but you need emotional experience too, don't you? You've got to have done the hard miles emotionally yourself. Thank you. But thank you, no, it's thank a pleasure you. to help you. Thanks, Thanks very much. I think they're so nice, these boys. Yeah. I think they really need leadership. I blame David entirely for this situation. Yes. I want to make it clear. And if he's going to get his children ever to be customer-facing, they have got to do it better than this. Yeah. The situation is serious. It's clear that the boys have not been given enough training or direction from David. Weak leadership breeds a deficient team. It's time for him to face facts. They were unanimous in agreeing that that setup is absolutely, to use one word, hideous. For someone who is recently bereaved to come in, to be sat across a desk from someone, mm. to feel that separation just when you need that warmth of human kindness. And I'm amazed at you for having set it up like that. A couple of weeks ago, we were looking at a, a yeah, point. But why, from, why is it too... being set up like that, darling? Mm. You, know, you have well, the experience. <clears throat> to be you honest, have, you yes. know, come on. This yes. is. I blame you for everything, by the way. Well, that's fine. No, but, but let me explain to mm, you why. Mm. You've got two sons here. They've never worked with another funeral director, so they're doing things your way. And so I blame their failings on you. If you came in, Sheena and I are mature, we're able to put an arm around you. There is no way these boys are ever going to... No, but you've, he's been running at an office single-handed, darling. You know, you're not there. You've trusted him to do it. We're slightly looking past the first point, which is get, getting them through the door. Initially, I'm not mm. avoiding that. Mm. I'm just saying, what's the point of me getting them to, through your door if, if once they get to you? Because, because honestly, I don't know because you've not had the real experience today. I was asked to come in and deal with David Holmes and Sons, mm. which and so is you four. Now, if you want to take yourself out of the equation, please do, darling. But I was being honourable and I'm dealing with what I have in front of me. Of course we have to get people through the door. But at the moment, it seems to me that what you're offering is low value, in a way, funerals. Trying what to be you fun. should try and be is that yeah, up there absolutely. that everyone's that talking is, about. That, my God, if you want your funeral done mm. properly, that's, there's only one person to go to in this 20-mile radius, and it is them. That is exactly that is what, what we're, you want. exactly what we're looking for. It's been a tough few days for the family, and for Toby, the reality has hit hard. I hated it, I did. I hated it. And it made me angry. And I don't want to be part of it anymore. You're going to quit? Oh, yeah. Unless Alex comes in and watches what we do, how else is she going to know how to fix the business? If you do quit, you are, I think, you're going to look a bit petulant, particularly as, mm. as Alex doesn't feel there's anything that you've done to merit, you know, walking out. So why do it? Why walk? Yeah, I don't want to come across as a quitter. The truth hurts, but my mission is to engage David's boys, not force them out. However, David's dream doesn't just depend on the boys. First and foremost, the finances have got to be solid. I've worked hard to establish a business that hopefully one day I could hand on. And at the moment, it's hard to see that happening because I'm just not doing well enough. Unless we can make this work, there will be no future for the boys. Funeral directing is a unique profession, but it's still a business. Hi. Hi, do you want some tea? David is ultimately responsible for all the financial decisions, so I want to know more about his attitude to money. Is there anything about working with him that drives you mad? I call him Giveaway Dave because he actually just gives away things that I would charge for. A lady wanted a casket and he just let her have it. And he is quite a softy on those side of things. People often say, oh, you're an undertaker, I don't know how you can bear to do that job. But the reality is we don't deal with the dead, we deal with the living. I'm not going to sit here and tell someone that until they give me a couple of thousand pounds, we won't be able to move. It's a very human business. David is generous to a fault. His business has potentially only weeks to live, and he is on the verge of killing it with his kindness. She calls you Giveaway Dave. She does call me Giveaway Dave, because Which I, is not a compliment. I am a soft touch. I can't help it. This warm glow about the heart that this generosity gives you is not going to last very long when your business isn't here any longer. 
our kindness will ensure we're busy. And if we're busy, we'll make money. When Your we were building reward our, may come in heaven. We're building our reputation. I'm not entirely sure it will come on this earth unless you get to grips well, with it. To be, f to be frank, yes. But it seems David's inability to think through his business decisions knows no bounds. If I need a limousine out here, I have to book one often from London, which costs me £250. How much do I charge for a limousine? It's £190. I do that because the going rate for a limousine seems to be about £190. So this, every time you ha someone has an extra limousine, you're losing 60 quid? Yes. Jesus Christ, darling. It's uh, lucky you're not very busy. Because otherwise you'd be broke. Is that not how most people run a business? No. It is not. You've said to me that the co-op is more expensive than yes, you. Yes, they're all in more. All the local co And yet that doesn't drive more. people to you, so surely that tells you something. Probably it should have done, yes. People buying funerals do very little price comparison, so David's sell em cheap business strategy is fundamentally flawed. He may be a kind-hearted man, but he's clearly not a businessman. I obviously need to persuade David that there can be a synchronicity between ethics and successful working practices. His business is suffering because of his morality at the moment, and he has to see that the two can coexist. Giveaway Dave's policy of offering funerals as cheaply as possible is destroying his business, and it isn't providing a high-value experience for his clients either. I feel that the service that Holmes & Sons is offering is not nearly personalised enough and it's completely lacking in inspiration. I'm taking the family to meet high-end wedding planner Siobhan Craven Robbins, who has created events for Hollywood stars including Joan Collins and Greg Kinnear. I'm hoping that showing them how a really good wedding planner does it will spark their interest in event planning, which is ultimately what they're there to do. The funeral market is changing, with people wanting events that celebrate a life rather than mourn a death. If the family offer more than just the basics, they will sell higher-value funerals, especially in their affluent location. Right. So, what I'm trying to do is get you away from only doing the very cheapest part of side of the market, which ultimately doesn't generate very much income from you. One of the things I wanted to show you is these fantastic books. When clients first come to me, they flick through these. These are all different weddings that I I've done over the 17 years oh, that, that sort of show d different elements of it. The idea is that someone then sees some element of that that calls to them. Mm and transposes that into their occasions. Exactly. Just helps to give people ideas. What you're not doing is sparking people's imagination. Well, you've sparked mine because I certainly feel, and you've made me think, that you don't see what we give you until you've had it. By then, that's all very well for the, the people we've served that they go away happy, but the new potential clients don't see that. Toby, what do you think? Yeah, I love the book. I think it's a really good idea. It's just visual and makes it very personal, and so I like it. Sometimes when a family comes in, they've already sorted out a venue. Mm. So, you know, when I'm talking to families, I could actually say half of them have already sorted out. Darling, I, you know what, they, you've got to... Uh, it's quite annoying, because I just feel like there's always an answer for everything. If it was all so bloody rosy in the bloody garden, I wouldn't be sitting around this table well, with what you. are you meant to do? Am I meant to say, no. actually, no, you can't... You, no, you go darling, somewhere there's no. more money... No, more... I'm suggesting that you have a way to show people options. So it's not just David who has a problem making money out of this business. But I have a plan to help him increase his profits without taking the money from their customers. Does someone, by booking it through you, pay a lot more than they would if they were paying for it independently? No, and I mean, that's something that perhaps you should look at with um, having recommended suppliers. They certainly don't pay any more, and with some of my suppliers, they actually get better deals because obviously, like yourselves, I represent repeat business. Yeah. Negotiating commissions with suppliers will allow the family to profit from booking venues, caterers and florists without their customers paying any more. If the family can drive this idea forward, then it is part of the solution to David's ethical dilemma. I like anyone who has like, different ideas and just showing different things, because I think it's worth a listen and worth a try. We're, we're always going to be more open to ideas because we're not as experienced yeah. and set in our traditional family ways. It's like, 
seen um, yeah, that definitely the way so. it's been done is the traditional way it's always been. So yeah, maybe d these different ways are going to be the way forward. David and the boys seem to be on side, but there is still one voice of dissent. I mean, how can you compare a wedding planner to a planning of a funeral? Because they're both major events. Yeah, they're major events, but one's got a 60 grand budget and the other one hasn't. It's still the same. You're still pulling together various elements. You're still advising. If I came to someone yeah, but what I'm to plan is a we've wedding... we've already got a florist. We've already got... But you've got it scattered around like a, as if you mean fired out of a shotgun around the because office. Because people She take... showed you all these elements in one book. You're focused on the fact that she was a wedding planner and you're a funeral director and you've got all the answers. No, they're just scattered around the I've office. I'm not saying I've got all the answers. But they were saying you need to get your profit from people like the printers. Additional profits. I mean, if you were a car salesman, when someone comes to talk to you about a car, they call it taking you out of the market. You're in the market for a car, they're taking you out of the market. When someone comes in here, they're in the market for what? A funeral. But we want to take them out of the market for a venue, flowers, yeah. catering, yeah. as many items on that list as we can. Well, we're already doing that. Me. Are we? I don't yeah. remember seeing a cheque from a printer or a, or a venue or a caterer um, or a florist. Where is all, Where are all these commissions that you're earning? I, don't, I give up. I think I do, actually, give up. I'm going out to the bin. Where is...? They don't exist. Yeah, right. Gina and my dad might be a little bit annoyed at each other, but I think that's just because they're always going to have different opinions about what's going to be best for the company and where we've been going wrong. My dad and Tina disagreeing shows that maybe I'd be able to get some of my ideas in there, Toby would be. Fresh thinking is what this business needs. And action is something it needs even more. I want the family to do the hard work for their customers, searching out the very best florists, venues and caterers in the area. Go into various businesses that might be useful to you, Talk to them, see what trade discounts you can negotiate. Remember that this is just as much the benefit of your customers as it is for you. And you shouldn't be embarrassed about talking about money because that is, after all, the basics of business. If the family can make commissions of between 10 and 20%, this will add up, potentially putting thousands of pounds straight in their pocket. But Sheena looks like I've suggested they rob graves. Did you? Get your come on, attitude woman. But really, I'm on your listen. I'm on this, your side. We're all on the same side. I'm not against you. I'm with you. Now put a smile on your face and a spring in your step. Goodness sake. Okay, go. Express yourself. Negotiating deals with suppliers means a more complete service at no extra cost to the customer. Hi, I'm Sheena from Homes and Sons. Oh, hello. Hi, I'm Hazel. I'm Oliver. Hello, my brother Toby. I'm, I'm Jane. Jane. The logic couldn't be simpler. If you promise the supplier more sales, they can afford to offer you a discount. Money. How would that work? I oh, was just looking for almost, you know, a good deal for us, a good deal for you, a good deal for the families. Ideally, what we'd like is to have a commission. Yep, that's absolutely fine. That's standard industry practice. See, standard industry practice. Mm. Clearly, Sheena still isn't enthused, and I obviously hit a raw nerve by taking them to a wedding planner. We're quicker, we're better, we're bang, 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 within five days. We've organised an event where she takes, like, two years or maybe eight months or whatever and has well, a bigger budget. So, therefore, it isn't the same. But the boys are a different story. What sort of percentage discount would you be able to help us out with? We'd be able to offer you a 20% discount on okay. that for, for all those Brilliant. customers. Yeah. What you have to do is screw them down to it, ultimately. Everyone's looking for business. But, you know, that is 20% is a significant amount. Let's try somewhere else. The one-stop shop. <laughs> <laughs> it's an idea that's going to fly, baby. Hi, I'm uh, Oliver Holmes, okay, and this is my hello. brother, Toby. Okay. And we're looking to build a relationship with a local florist. Okay. They seem to be doing really well. And the more I see them, the more I'm convinced that what is really bad for them is being stuck in that office without enough to do. They are so much better enthused and energised and out and about and doing something practical. And it's good for you guys because, obviously, using the same supply, you get 15% of whatever you sell as well. So it's, okay. uh, it's good for both of us, really. I think they need a lot more direction than they're being given. And they need to be encouraged to think on their feet and do stuff like this. They're really good at it. 
Well, it was really nice to meet you. Thank you very much yeah, for your help. Thank you. No Thank you. Take care. Thank All the best. Now, I just need David to grab the bull by the horns and lead his staff to get this one-stop shop idea going over the next few weeks. But a week after I leave, David amazes me with a decision that's shocking even for someone with his lack of business brain. Rather than focusing on his sons and my fix, he's signed a 10-year lease on another premises. He's opening a Holmes & Sons branch in Aldershot. We're now standing in the reception area. There'll be a wall here, very much like the fleet shop. Uh, and in here will be the arranging office. If Alex didn't think this was a good idea, she could potentially walk away. And I think she's confident about this business, that she can help us make the business successful. He's put himself further into debt, taking out a family loan to pay for the shop fitting. With his house and his business on the line, I can only hope that he's put more thought into this than it appears, as I'm back too late to change anything. We've got six months, we, we think, to, uh, to uh, make something happen there. So what happens in six months? Can you give up the lease? No. Oh. I'm just fascinated in the idea that you're not doing particularly well. Let's open another one. What market research have you done? Just... Um... Uh, we think we will be the only family business in that area oh. and we think that that's likely to, uh, to attract people. But you're just basing this on hope. You haven't done any market research. You haven't done... What have you done to base this on? It's just gut instinct. Oh. The 10-year rental contract will cost David £80,000. With a business already so close to the edge, this is surely financial suicide. When my grandfather first opened a property, he stood in front of it and clicked every time someone walked past so he could see what footfall was. That's the kind of market research that you need to do. He was like, oh, my God, you shouldn't be doing that. <laughs> and I'm thinking, well, why not? There comes a point when you're standing on the edge of that cliff and you've just got to jump. I feel slightly depressed by how much and how fiercely they defend their stupid ideas. Might as well be playing roulette. If David won't focus on my fix and on ways to make money, then there's nothing I can do to save this business. What's more, his management style is making life even more difficult. I think my dad could do a better job of motivating. He's never told me, I think you do this well, which I think is important, so what you do well. And he's completely forgotten about the one-stop shop. Only Ollie is doing anything about it. I could never picture my dad in a million years doing anything like this. Thinks it's probably more of a girl's job, so... <laughs> Did he have a task? He must have had a task. But honestly, I'm so distracted by this, I can't even remember what we're supposed to have been doing. I am increasingly losing my patience with David. How are you? Good. How is everything? I haven't really been here for the past fortnight. The boys have got on with the task. It's not difficult to have made that book, is it? But you are the boss of the business. Well, I do ask them how it's going. And have you told them to do anything? Have you directed them in any way? Um, not really, no. Oh, God. If David wants to realise his dream of passing the business to his sons, he is doing absolutely nothing to help himself. You know, I feel frustrated on lots of levels. I feel frustrated with you as a boss because I think that if you have two young men here who are not experienced in the business, they need directing. They need telling what to do. You need to find out what they do every day. But I find you inadequate as a boss. He needs to try harder. He needs to work harder. He needs to be more involved. I can't carry this. David's crazy decision-making has left me dumbfounded just weeks before the relaunch, and his unwillingness to properly direct his young staff is worrying. I have to shake some life into this reluctant boss. I've got an idea that should inspire David, a way they can build their reputation in the community which is perfectly in tune with his ethics. Good afternoon, Holmes and Sons. There are other ways to show you care than handing out free coffins, and David is missing a trick. I want them to start their very own volunteering scheme. To which end I had prepared this 
beautiful names and phone numbers. What you're asking people to do is commit an hour of their time to help someone who's been recently bereaved and to do anything that they need to do, whether that is a chat, some gardening, or drive them somewhere that they need driving to. Uh, frankly, I'd rather be painting. I'd like to see you engaging with people. You know, you have to start from somewhere. It's not the positive reaction I'd hoped for. What David doesn't see is that a volunteering scheme will make them stand out from their competitors and gives a clear message of the business's caring principles. So what we're looking for, people are willing to give perhaps as little as half an hour, an hour of their time once a month or once every couple of months. Just that so we've got... What's this. more, it won't Someone cost saying. them a penny. I often think what would happen, you know, if I died, what would happen to my wife? It sounds a good idea to me. I don't mind being on your list. Well, it's very kind of you, sir. I think it's a good idea. When you said funeral drips, I didn't realise there was one at the other end of the town. Yeah. But we do now. <laughs> Could we sign you up for that? Yeah. Thing? But it's just uh, helping someone out, really, in our way of helping the community. It is really, it's something you'd be interested yeah. in doing. Yeah, definitely. Brilliant. You know, I've had a few people that I care about have passed away, and if I can help, I'm, I'm happy to do so. With a bit of effort, they're really connecting with the community. Initially, when we got out here, they seemed so unsure. They didn't see the validity of it, and also, it didn't look like they were going to give it any effort at all. I think it shows to them that ask, engage with people, and you will get a response. Something like this, I think it's fantastic. It's new. It should, you know, have a lot of interest in the town, hopefully. And David's lead is inspiring the boys. I didn't think everyone would be so willing to get involved, but they seem more than happy to uh, get involved and uh, put their names down, which is good. We've only got well two done. spaces. You might actually have the bare bones of a volunteering service right there. If David is to keep his business in the family, I need him to keep leading by example. But there must be a deeper reason why he hasn't been pushing his sons harder. This business has potential as a career, but only if they're committed and interested. If they're not, then quite frankly, I'd rather they went out there and tasted the big bad world and maybe realised how easy it was when they were working the family business. I don't want them to realise how easy it is. I want them to have a bit more fire in their mm. belly. Yeah, I agree. I think you need more fire in your belly. Well, I'm at the end, I'm five years, six years into a very, very... Um, shitty time. Yeah. I think that's something that you have to look at. It's very hard to say to people, you need a fire in your belly, you need to be mm. passionate, mm. when I don't think that you are. When, or at least you don't appear to be. It's clear I need to help David rediscover his passion for his business, which is looking as tired as David sounds. And to do that, I want to tackle one of the fundamental problems of this industry. Death gets rather a bad press in this country, it strangely. Does. Mm. And in some ways, you're selling the unsellable. And we need to find good ways to sell ourselves and what the product is. Funerals are a distress purchase. The majority of people call the first funeral home they think of. This is not a market that shops around for long, which is why name recognition and branding are so important in this industry. Both things I think Holmes and Sons have got very wrong. I'm taking the family to see multi-award winning agency GBH. They've created branding for high-end companies such as Puma and Virgin. They certainly know when a brand works and when it doesn't. We've actually come up with words that we feel accurately reflect the way you're currently coming across. So here's our handy device. First up, family business. That's a positive one. Next up, honest. Good. Also positive. I feel bad news is coming. You come across as independent, but a bit isolated. Use of inappropriate language. Indistinct. Low cost. Inconsistent. Mm. Temporary. <laughs> Sorry about that. And finally, poor attention to detail. What are your thoughts about what we have to say about your business? Well, actually, one low yeah. cost. What, what would that 
Well, the offer is coming across as fairly cheap. I hate that word. That's why they use low cost. <laughs> <laughs> they were being kind. <laughs> Poor attention to detail. If our image conveys that message, the very core of what we do is our attention to detail. So that is saying so saying the wrong thing. And actually, the reason I feel almost sick about the fact that we've allowed that to happen, if it can't be good with its own attention to detail, are, can I trust them with something as important as a funeral? So... That's the danger, isn't it? Yeah. 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 But at least now we all agree on the negatives. We can take it forward and we're in a position to actually do some good work now. This is the past. We must bury <laughs> Move on swiftly. <laughs> now the penny has dropped, is David ready to tackle the long-winded name of his business? David Holmes and Sons, independent, family-owned funeral directors and monumental mm. masons. It's quite a mouthful, isn't it? We need to at least have a look at simplifying what you're putting on the front of the shop. We just thought we'd sort of throw it over to you and say, do you need the David? No. No. <laughs> no. no. That's what I said, no, didn't I? Nice. Let's do a vote. So, David, thumbs up or thumbs down? Yeah. Monumental Masons. Sons. I think get rid of sons. Yeah. What do you think, and family? That gives a bit more leeway <laughs> for yeah. any of you who come and go into the business. Yeah. What, what, so, sons down. The sons oh. can go. Oh, gosh, you now unanimity. <laughs> Homes and family funeral directors. I love that. Right, good. So I like it. I like it. It's much cleaner. It's a breakthrough, and it's not just the name that's going to change. The agency are also going to help rebrand the look of the whole shop. To me, it's like, where have you been all my life? Just so, so excited. I'll sleep soundly in my bed tonight knowing that these guys are thinking about how to put Hans and Sons I across. Think, I think they're buzzing. When Alex first came to us and she said, it's cheap, it's this, it's that, I can actually say, it is, it's cheap, it's rubbish. It was so easy and obvious to see once they put it up there how, you know, bland and uninspiring it was. This was a very good day. Uh, I think we're certainly all agreed on that. But one big question still remains. Are Toby and Ollie any more committed than they were? So I think the inside of the windows do need a bit of a clean. Might be time. When I first arrived, the boys were disengaged and David's leadership was doing nothing to change that. Tomorrow, we'll probably give the whole hearse another polish. It's always been David's dream to keep the business in the family when he retires. But it would be better to lose the family from homes and family than to keep employing two sons who don't want to work there. Originally, when I got into the funeral business, it just, to me, it seemed the most exciting thing in the world. It, I couldn't wait to get to work in the morning. It's not that I'm not interested in funerals, it's just I have lots of interests, so want to pursue other things possibly as well. And we would be daft to say we would, you know, love it or enjoy it as much as you when you've done it for, you know, the period of time you have. Ollie has been offered a place on a teacher training course and has to make a decision whether to accept it in the next few weeks. Toby has potential but has always seemed reluctant. The thought of being in the same job, you know, for the rest of your life scares me. You feel, hang on a second, maybe I shouldn't be doing this, so I'll maybe do it when I'm older. You know, will they still be here in a year's time? The answer is, I don't know. I would be really sorry to see either of them go. Things can't carry on like this. The uncertainty is having a negative impact on the business, with all three of them just coasting along. It's time they made some decisions. If I put a gun to your head and I asked you to say, what would you advise them to do? Yeah, I would rather they stayed and made a go of it. I'd rather we all made it work. David is never going to get this sorted of his own accord, so I've told the boys to think through their options. If they decide to stay, then David has got to invest in training them properly. If they don't, David's dream to pass his business to his sons is dead. Um, I would quite like to try a lot of different things and see what sticks or see what I enjoy. I think the thing I enjoy about here is working with you and working with Ollie. So working at another funeral director's, I probably wouldn't... It doesn't sound to me like I would enjoy it as much. 
and I think it will benefit me to go away and see different things and learn new things and try out different experiences, I think. My plan next year is to go away traveling. You know, it's been good to have you. I feel quite relieved to have aired it and told my dad about it all. Um, and definitely being honest about everything, I think, is a good thing. And it's not something we do enough, probably, is be honest with each other and sit down and do a very simple thing and just talk. Ollie is David's last hope. If he follows his brother, then the family will be gone from homes and family. Now, obviously, it's a very tough decision deciding what I want to do. Um, I don't want to feel like I'm dependent on family still, which feels like you've never really left home. I feel like I've got a lot to offer here. I've got to drive. And if, if we can help the family name grow, I'd like to stay. I think it's absolutely fabulous that you've made that decision. And for what it's worth, I think this is the right thing for you. I really do. That's <laughs> surprising, Donnie. I was astonished. I genuinely believe, if I were run over by a bus tomorrow, that you are capable of running this business. And I have been thinking that it might make sense for me to take a bit of a step back and drive the hearse or limousine, and you to be doing the conducting. So you're the one that's introducing yourself to the family on the doorstep. You're the one taking com control at the crematorium, because I think that would make you feel more responsible. Yeah, and that sounds good to me. A new era dawns for the family business. Now father and son can move forward together as a committed team. Well, that's really, uh, really good to hear. It's not very often that I actually hear much praise from my dad, so I think it was nice to sit down and hear him say some nice things. It was nice to hear him talk quite fondly about what I can offer to the business, and yeah, it was nice to see a smile on his face. I think having a decision from the boys is really good, and to know that Ollie really seems to be now committed and wants to make a go of the funeral industry and, and the family business is just really, really nice. I think Ollie's more and more convinced that this is what he wants to do. It makes me really care even more about giving him something to come to. Change is afoot at Homes and Family. In collaboration with the branding agency, I have put a plan in place to transform the look and layout of the shop. It does feel like a bit of a new beginning. The painting feels a bit symbolic. It makes it feel more like a, a proper rebirth a fresh start. We're done with this. This is the old Holmes and Sons. Since deciding to stay in the business, Ollie has pushed forward with the one-stop shop idea and is finally negotiating deals with suppliers and starting work on the book of inspiration. But some people still need further convincing. I thought we were talking positively about the book. Yeah, but that's for you. <laughs> you can talk what? whatever you want about the book. I don't care. I do think it's a good idea. It's just. How are you going to present that to a family? It's not, you, don't really pre you don't present it, you just leave it there and they can have a look through, leave it the page open. I know my florist, mm -hmm. I know which ones but are good. That's not because I don't know. I don't need the book to help me, like a massive book to like aid me with my ideas. Well, that's what you're doing. If it's not, it's not to help me. Who's it to help then? Because if you remember rightly, that wedding, <laughs> wedding planner turned around and said, have a conversation with them. Mm. I'm not going to go like this. Say this is a book. I'm not going to your family. I'm not going to go. This is a very good book that I did. Have a look. I'll see you in half an hour. Sorry. But at least the arguments aren't stopping the work on the shop being completed. I'm coming back to Homes and Family to see the new look shop in person for the first time before it's relaunched. When I first visited Homes and Sons, I was shocked by their depressing, cheap-looking exterior. This is a change. Now, the shop front is both eye-catching and understated. I am hoping that this is going to make people stop and look. It's a much smarter exterior.
Well, doesn't this look better? A waiting area that does not shove coffins down your throat as soon as you walk in. Inside, the space is calming and reassuring. I don't think anyone could take the exception to this. In the arranging room, the barrier between arranger and client has been removed. What they really need to do is concentrate on people and leave all the paperwork till the last minute. This is obviously a much better setup. So, what do you think of the transformation? I think it's brilliant. I think it's <laughs> very good. So the best thing is the layout of the office because first thing you see when you come in is a nice welcoming environment, come and have a seat rather than desk and chairs like before. So. I can imagine someone walking in and us saying, take a seat, have a cup of tea. Don't feel that it's a formal environment that you're the other side of the desk. I completely get that. You know, you've taken us up market. Now, I noticed that Trouble over here is staying very <laughs> silent. Let's hear it, Sheena. Let's hear it. I, I do like the colour, mm. but <laughs> mm. yes. I like my coffins on the wall. Um, you need to like to see more depth about the yeah. place. Yeah. Yeah. I think the point is that I haven't done this with my thoughts about whether you're going to like it or not. And I thought about the customer. And I'm hoping that this is a way to make them feel like that they get a cut above. They're now perfectly set up to attract customers from this affluent neighbourhood. They have a new look, a new name and hopefully a newfound enthusiasm. It's time to relaunch homes and family within the community. The family have decided that the best way to demonstrate their caring values to the local community is by holding a balloon release in memory and celebration of local people loved and lost. Both previous and potential customers have been invited. It gives us an opportunity to hand out some of the lovely new homes and family postcards. It gives us a chance to once again talk to everybody about the volunteering scheme. And it gives us a chance to celebrate together how far we've come. And this time, it's up to Ollie to take the lead. Afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much for coming. Uh, I'm sure you know why we're all here, to remember someone we've lost close to us. So if I could invite you all to help yourself to a balloon and we'll follow the band down to the park. <laughs> They've organised a funeral march with a difference through Fleet, a fun way to bring everyone together, which will also make people in the community aware of who they are. It feels like the whole of Fleet has come out to see us pass. The band is attracting attention, and homes and family are on the map at last. <laughs> And even Toby's Facebook status may be useful at last. The balloons that the family have organised each represent a loved one that has passed away. An event like this shows the community that homes and family care about the living as well as the dead. Thank you all for coming. It means so much to us now to have Oliver here committing his future to the business, which is terrific, uh, to, to know that the business will go on another generation. We're here to release these balloons in memory of, of the people we've lost, the people we're remembering tonight. And it's not a miserable occasion, it's a happy occasion, because life is all about celebration, remembering the best times and the happy times. And if you're ready, I like the personal touch. Very important. Yeah. Especially when you're feeling very vulnerable. Yes. You want to know you're going to be cared for, and it seems like that's what this company does for you. Sometimes when you bereave, people don't want to talk to you because they don't want to say the wrong thing. So it's quite nice to get together to talk to one another, really, because everybody's bereaved, so we're all sort of in the same boat.
So I think you do have to think about doing something like this annually. It becomes so much a part of community life that you're the automatic thought when people have a bereavement. You know, they come to you because they've heard about you, because they know about your event, because you've done fundraising, they've seen you in the street. You know, anything that you do that is out of the office has a value. There's so many little things we can get on with now which I think are going to make a really big difference, especially the branding, the shop front, the community project, the volunteering. They're all such good things which can really help us build a good relationship with the people of Fleet. I think what Alex has done for me is having that courage to step away from the desk out of my own environment. We don't have to be a big corporation to do a big event. We can do it on our own strengths. I'm determined to make this business successful and to see it grow. I think it can because we've got the right people and the right systems now. We can't bury Giveaway Dave. I think he'll always be there because there'll always be people that just don't have the money. But at the end of the day, we do need to, to pay the bills and it is a business. Some hopeful talk, but I can't deny this has been a bumpy ride. For a large part of this, I felt like there was enormous resistance that I was working against. It's just been quite a frustrating experience, if I'm honest. I feel like there is a lot more we could have done. And I, all I can do is hope that they've really taken on board the advice I've given them and that they're going to put some effort into it. I pin my hopes on Ollie, frankly. Four weeks later, they've had enough time to find out if the changes have actually helped the business. I think a lot more people have got to know us. People have been coming in talking about the new shop here. Hello. Hi, David. What do you think of the new shop? Oh, I'm loving it. Homes oh, and family have seen a 30% increase in bookings, which is subsidising a slow start to the order shop branch. This is the reception area. We open a new branch, you never know what's going to happen. We're confident. Proving Alex wrong. You can't expect everything to change overnight. I think everybody's reluctant to change generally in life. If we don't like it, then we won't do it. It's much easier to keep doing things the way you've always done them. I don't think he'll suddenly turn into a different person, no. He's probably just too stuck in his ways. I remember you. However, the family are making slow, tentative steps forward with the volunteering scheme. What jobs would you say that you were able to offer? Any DIY job. They're really, really nice. Yeah. And the one-stop shop. Just on leaflets on tables. The big news is Ollie's role is much more concrete in the firm. First time in your life. My own business card. The person who's changed the most has definitely been Oliver. His confidence has clearly grown. It's forced him to step up and become more responsible. Homes and family means everything to me. But now I've chosen to carry on, it really feels like it's going to be a career for me rather than just a stopgap. This is something I really do a good job with. And David's passion for the business seems to have been reignited. My feelings have certainly changed towards my job. I can remember thinking I had passed my peak, maybe, and now I feel my best days lie ahead rather than behind me. The future of the family business looks safe. So you're confident, happy, everything's under control. I can really see Oliver taking over and being a career funeral director. How to keep the baying crowds under control next tonight on BBC HD? There's nothing like naffed-off commuters to brighten your day. The Railway, keeping Britain on track, coming up.